to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We praise him. We praise him. We exalt his name because he is God and God alone. And this is your host, Elder Anton Sills, and I give God all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory for what he's doing, seen and unseen, even right now, God. We just bless your holy name, oh God. We thank you for seen and unseen blessings. We thank you for this Tuesday, coming back on Tuesdays for our teaching, oh God, teaching of your word that you would be glorified and exalted as we come before you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity just to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And this is your host, Elder Anton Seals, as we praise God today on our uh, on our live, hallelujah, Tuesday afternoon podcast. This is the Bible week, Bible class, eight weeks of Bible class series out of the book, The Tabernacle Dwells in You, starting at chapter five, starting at chapter five. And you can see that uh, live on the screen now. So I thank God for this opportunity to just praise his name and to exalt his name as we go forth sharing and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, that, that God would be glorified and exalted. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, seen and unseen, on this podcast, on this weekly Tuesday, beginning again on Tuesday. This is Elder Anton Seals. Today's date is September the 20th. We've been off for about three months, but I thank God to be back on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. If you're sitting at home, you're listening to this, we're on every Tuesday. We're going to be teaching on uh, the tabernacle this week. We're talking about the anointing. We're going to be teaching on directly out of the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing, the concentrate, consecrating and ordaining of the priest. You are called to be a priest. Hallelujah. And you can find that in Revelations 1. You can also find that that as we learn and study this lesson, that we're going into the consecrating of, of, of the uh, priests, but also the anointing or the anointing with the holy oil before entering. So there's a place that we represent ourselves before God, that we surrender ourselves, humble ourselves, surrender to God with all sincerity of heart and repenting and asking God for forgiveness as we come humbly before you even right now, God, on chapter 5, page 131, if you have your books, page 130, 131 through 146 today, page 130 through 146 in chapter 5. This is part 2, chapter 5, and we're going to be spending time helping people to understand what it means to be this priest, what it means to be a child of God, a believer Hallelujah, a believer, one who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, that Jesus died on the cross. There are some religions that don't believe that, that Jesus is the incarnated one, that he is the son of the living God, that he is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we want to express to you, we welcome you. We pray that this teaching will, will touch your life, that help you tap into the plan God has for each one of you. I am just excited. Excited. And just to give God all the praise, honor, and glory, Elder Jennifer Seals, thank you so very much, my sweets, my wife, who has stood by my side through all these years. I've been off. We've been off the, the teaching and off the weekly podcast on Thursdays because I had surgery. And I just thank God for the victory that what you're seeing is a living miracle. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you about it more as we get into the teaching. But we're going to be talking about the anointing on your life, what it means. What you When you finish today, we want you to be able to summarize what it means to be anointed, what it means to be sanctified what it means to be a man and woman of God, old or young, child or old, it doesn't matter. God doesn't matter. God doesn't, doesn't count. God matters, but he doesn't count uh, who you are, hallelujah, as much as he charges you for what's in your heart, what you believe. How do you carry yourself? How do you carry out your divine purpose for being on the face of this earth? There's more than just things of the world that, that we're hearing and seeing. And so, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to go forth and teach in your word. I want to direct you, hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to be teaching on and off screen so that people that don't have a book 
I want people to be able to see that this is the tabernacle that dwells in you. We're on page 130, page 130. And the reason I'm doing this is I want people to see, I want people to see that that this work, this teaching that we're doing, even right now, as we get into this lesson, that, that I see, I believe that's Brother Clarence Brown that's on. We welcome you. God bless you, Brother Clarence. I think that's Brother Clarence Brown. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. I thought that was that 4482 number. Hallelujah. Thank you for being on. Uh, People can't see you live, but we are on live. And I pray other people that have been on the class will come back. And and if you have people that are listening right now, share. Please share this on Facebook Live. We're on Facebook Live. Please feel free to share this. I am going to share the book uh, that we're coming out of right now so others can see it. I'm going to share this so that you can see uh, what we're talking about. But I first want to go into the text of the lesson today. And we're going to begin uh, at ch- on page uh, 130, page 130, chapter 5, page 130. And this is out of the book that uh, Elder Sills and I wrote called The Tabernacle Dwells in You. And we self-published this. Um, consecrating, ordaining the high priest, the priests. And this was part of the tabernacle training and tabernacle instructions, the covenant that God had given to Moses to follow that carries on to our day through Christ Jesus, who gave us the gift of life. We're not living under the law. I want us to go through some scripture text to help us today. The anointing is the very presence of the Holy Spirit of God. It, it is the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the making uh, of the oils, the ordination that takes place according to uh, articulating what the st- instructions that God was given to Moses. But I want you to go with me first as we talk a little bit about this, that this, this entire process, and I'm right here, if you see me highlighting this, I'm doing that because I know some of you are watching me live but I want to to, to highlight this uh, just to say to you that the entire process points us to being separated. It points us this this blood offering of Jesus, the, the, the blood offering of the lamb in the tabernacle, uh, of, of, of the instructions that were given and written down even in the book of Leviticus that breaks it down even more, the instructions of, of the tabernacle and how you enter into the presence of God from an outer court relationship into a more perfect relationship through Christ Jesus by accepting him. The sanctification meaning to set apart. You've been set apart from a life of sin. That doesn't mean that you live a pure life. It means that you're not practicing sin and you're heartily sorry when you recognize that you've made bad decisions or you've done some things that are sinful in the sight of God. This entire process, this teaching today is all about you understanding that you've been saved and sanctified, set apart for the glory of God. Salvation is the gift of eternal life. It's it's a gift gift that God has given us. So the sanctification is clearly given by the grace of God through the shed blood, the shed blood. So we don't have to bring rams and and bulls to the altar or turtle doves. We're just coming ourselves and surrendering ourselves. I beseech you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you give yourself, uh, devote yourself to Christ Jesus. Surrender yourself to Christ Jesus because the teaching here says the elect, the elect, uh-huh, the elect according. I'm in First Peter, First Peter 1 and 2 and 3. First Peter 1, 2 and 3. It says 2 on the screen, but I'm going into 3. Electing, electing to for knowledge the God the Father, for acknowledging the God our Father through sanctification of the Spirit, the elect. He says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. In other words, God has given us this knowledge through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that this living word, the Bible, the seed of God's breath, the seed of God's mind, his thought, the seed, the mustard seed of faith is the word of God, is the spirit of God, the sanctification that, that has separated you from sin because you're confessing that you believe in the spirit of the living God, which is Jesus incarnated who created all things in himself for himself to be glorified and created you in his image and his likeness. And so unto obedience and the sprinkling, sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, 
What do we mean by the sprinkling? The sprinkling means it, it represents even from the Old Testament that something had to be sacrificed. You have to, if you want a prayer life, you have to sacrifice something to get in this relationship with Jesus Christ. To get in this relationship with God, you have to be willing to let go and to let God move in your life. And so this scripture talks about grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundant mercy that he's given to you, he hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Now, faith is the, the substance of things hoped for. That lively hope is hoping in Jesus by the resurrection, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So now we have an understanding that the sprinkling of the blood required a sacrifice. Yes, it did. The sanctification requires a sacrifice, that you confess that you are being separated from God. You can't speak it into being, but if you speak it out of your mouth, believing in your heart, according to Romans 8, 9, and 10, and throughout the rest of that scripture, it talks about how when you confess believing in your heart, that God delivers you out of the nature of your sin nature and begins to give you a life on a journey of life that he's given you this gift of eternal, hallelujah, a gift of eternal life. It is not, it is free to receive by just confessing it, but it costs you something to live it. I want to say that again. It's going to cost you something to live it. And so this teaching today, as we go into this teaching of the word of God, that, that you see this entire process as the teaching of God's word that is moving in your life, hallelujah, that's giving God glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for even my sister-in-law that's, that's tuned in and watching. We thank you for all of those that are sharing this teaching today, right now, God. We just bless your holy name, oh God. The sacredness of the anointing oil is what we want to get into. So if you have your Bibles, I, let me slow down because it's been a while and I get excited. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you got your Bibles open, go to Exodus 30. We're going to be talking about now, we understand Understand that Jesus, the Lamb, the Lamb, the sacrificial Lamb, that 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 in Exodus it talks about bringing uh, from Exodus 26 all the way through Exodus 30 or 33, that it talks about bringing a sacrifice before the altar. And so we bring ourselves right now, Holy Spirit, God, you're welcome in our lives. Holy Spirit, Jesus, you are welcome. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We thank you for the quickening of your spirit that empowers people to do the will of God. J J Jesus, the name Jesus represents and means the Messiah, the anointed one the anointed one. And I added some new things to this uh, uh, teaching today, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So I want us to go to Exodus 30, and then I'll come off screen and just start teaching a little bit more. Uh, 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 but Exodus 30 begins uh, 30, 23 through 35. Exodus 30, uh, that's Exodus 30, chapter 30, and we're going through uh, verses 23 to 35. I'm not going to read all 12 verses. I'm giving it to you as a context to know where we are in the scripture that gives the, uh, the evidence, if you will, of the teaching. But Moses institutes all the instructions that God has given to him. He, he's, he's doing exactly what God has commissioned him to do. And so part of this teaching today is to get you to a place uh, where Moses says, take thou also upon these, these, these principal spices, uh, the pure myrrh, the 500 shekels. And I want you to know that in, in the new international version, uh, the, the, and I had the, um, uh, what was it called? Uh, let me go back to it. Yes, I can go there right now. Uh, in, in part of the teaching today, I want you to know if you have your Bibles open, if you have the message Bible or the voice Bible, uh, that's, those are other versions other than King James, uh, but it breaks it down where it says collect, uh, 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 the best spices, 12 and a half pounds, 12 and a half pounds, mm -hmm. 12 and a half pounds, 12 and a half pounds of liquid myrrh, six pounds of fragrant cinnamon, six pounds of fragrant cane, 12 and a half pounds of acacia. And, 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 and then it goes on and it tells us 
that, that there's some other herbs that, that we're going to be talking about. I'm going to break all five of these herbs down to you. So, but I want you to know that that's found in Exodus 30, 23 to 35. So when you hear me referencing this teaching today, it's coming strictly out of scripture. If you don't have a copy of the book that you see that's on the screen, you can write me and, and I'll make sure that you can get a copy of it or get a copy of this lesson. But God bless you. And so we're talking about the mixture of the anointing oils and how what it represents in your relationship and with Jesus Christ. The anointing oil, the process of creating the oils, of selecting what God gave them directions to do. Moses, I want you anointing one of God. I want you to go get the oils, and, and which was offered as a sin offering before God. It was used for ordaining the tabernacle. It, it was used on the furnitures and all the utensils. Even the remains were carried to certain sacred areas that had to be set up by the Levitical priests that were clean. And so everything that they that they did represents being in the presence of God. Your prayer life is sitting you in the presence of God. When you pick up your Bible, you need to understand and grow to a, a value and reverence is a better word. Reverence the holiness of who God is by the inspiration of this Bible called the living word of God. Not just the New Testament, but the New and the Old Testament that gives us evidence of the foreshadowing of the coming of Jesus Christ, who is God in flesh, who said that I have to come and give you an example who made us in his image, but because of the sins of the children that he created, even Adam and Eve and all the children of Israel, the anointed children, the chosen generations, and you now represent that generation if you are a believer that Jesus rose on the third day. And so you become the living sacrifice. No, we're not putting you on the altar of fire. We're saying to you that that your prayer life will sit you in the presence of God. If you're sincere, I don't know if you're sincere or not, but the Holy Spirit does. And I want to be mindful of the time, but it, we got plenty of time. The mixture of the anointing oil was mixed with blood from a sacrificial ram and bulls, which was offered as a sin offering before God. It was used for ordaining, as I said before, uh, the, the instruments and utensils and the furniture, uh, the, the furniture in the tabernacle, also in the outer court was the altar of sacrifice. Also in the inner court, uh, the, the, not the holy court, but the, the inner court, the holy court, which represented the menorah, excuse me, the, the menorah, but menorah, menorah means candle. It represents the candle that had seven lights on it or candles, seven candles uh, that were on it. There's the table of showbread, which means the bread of life, the, the manna that comes down from heaven that's now also in the Ark of the Covenant. And so we know now that the sacrifice, and then the most, another, uh, all three of these go together, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so, and, and the holy uh, court was also this, this holy altar of prayer called the altar of incense or the altar of prayer. And so this is where the high priest would go and, and he would offer uh, prayers throughout the year, but only once a year could he go behind the veil. And so, and we're in that season, by the way, of, of this week, I think the 22nd is entered to Yom Kippur, which is the, the anointing of coming in and, and giving what's called the atone, atonement, atonement, atonement meaning to be at one with God, that you're giving a giving your life as a sacrifice to be in oneness with God, to be in the spirit of God, to, to understand that, that there is a creator who made me for this dispensation of time that I live in. And so clearly the Lord has a divine plan and the holy garments and the robes that were worn by the high priest, uh, he did away with that with Jesus because Jesus just came with a robe on, brothers and sisters. He came with a robe that got dirty because he, he didn't come riding on a chariot. So he takes the least of us and elevates people. And while 
while man has issues with your gift, God loves you. He loves everybody, even the sinners. And so Moses is God's messenger. I want you to know that Moses is God's prophet. And therefore, God is saying to us in these scriptures that I have anointed each one of you to be a child of God, to be a person of God, to be my candle of the Lord, saith the Lord. I've called you to be my ambassadors. And so I have anointed you. Uh, I've given you the gifts. I've given you the power, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to activate, hallelujah, to manifest the work that I've sinned and planned for you to do. God has anointed you, meaning that the, that, that the Messiah, Jesus, has spread this oil. Anointing also means to rub on. But he's not literally rubbing something on because this anointing doesn't come from a bottle of oil that you get with a priest anoint you, even though in the book of uh, Old Testament, it talks about the anointing of Solomon and David and others, but we're talking about the Holy Spirit that shows up on Jesus when John the Baptist says, there's one greater than me, hallelujah, hey, glory to God. And these things I'm teaching says that, that, that Moses is teaching us that the high priest for the oracles of God would speak uh, directly to God as was led by divine provocation and teachings, the implementation, the manifestation of God's word, the visions and the plans that he's given to you was given on Mount Sinai, was given to you before the foundation of time, was given to you if you can only believe in the power of the working of God that's in you. This anointing is similar to Jesus receiving his crown of righteousness. That's why mm, righteousness. He calls you to be children of his righteousness, not our self-righteousness, because that's unto sin. We have, we have to humble ourselves, but God our Father has placed us in this world to represent the covenant that he's made that never leave you or forsake you, but he wants you to spread the good news, the gospel, teach the word of God, that there's power, that you are his children, that you are his candles, that you are his sheep, and the sheep hear his voice. Can you hear I'm talking to you right now. So the believers are doers of the word of God, and they wear a crown. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to have a crown. He said, I've given you a helmet of salvation. You want to pay, stay tuned to this, because next week, we're going to also, we're going to take three weeks to break down putting on the whole armor of God. Three weeks of breaking down. We always talk about the whole armor of God, but I want you to know we're going to teach three separate weeks so that you get a better understanding of this power and how the the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and the, and the, and the belt, and the, the buckler, and, and all of their feet shouted in the preparation. We're going to break it down so you can understand. But right now, we're going to Isaiah 63 excuse me, Isaiah 62 and 3, and anointing oil, the anointing oil, hallelujah, the anointing oil, praise God, the Holy Spirit is the crown laid up for you in heaven for believers, it's, the, it's the, also the blessing of the Lord that releases, hallelujah, it releases glory to God, listen to this, it releases the anointing of the blessings of the Lord, releases the anointing of the Holy Spirit of love, unspeakable joy, the wisdom and knowledge, to understand that these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Following is a list of some attributes that I've talked about, the, the quickening of the Holy Spirit, the unction of the Holy Spirit. But we know not how to pray except for the unction of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm, I'm challenging all of us to be in this place with God. I can't read everything that's on the screen, but, but this anointing, this covering of the Holy Spirit, it gives you a hunger and a thirsting. Uh, I do want to take you back to, if you have your Bible, let's go to, to uh, John 7. I, I, I want you to go to John 7. Uh, if you don't mind, go to John 7. 38. Can you can you go there with me? John 7 and 38. I, I'm going there right now. Hallelujah. John 7, 38. Come on here. Let me scroll a little faster. But I thank God as, as we get into the text of this word that, that John 7, 37, it, it teaches us that, that God is saying that all ye that hunger and thirst, all ye that hunger and and thirst come unto me uh-huh because uh, uh, the rivers of living water hallelujah flow from your belly hallelujah I, I i want you to know that we're talking about our savior we're talking about an anointing it says in the last day in the last day 
Jesus, in the last day of the great feast, this was always a festival. And, and there were seven different types of festivals. We'll talk about that later. We've done that earlier. But the festivals was the coming to give honor to God. And there was a sin offering. There was a peace offering. There's a love offering. And so God was saying, I want you to come. But he says, stood and he says, and Jesus is calling the world to him even today. If any man thirsts and come unto him and drink, he that believeth on me, hallelujah, as the scripture said, this is not Brother Theo's writing, but as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The rivers of living water exemplify several things about the power. When you hear water, it's always representing the power. You ever notice the storms and it rains and it floods and, 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 and earthquakes and things like that? That's power in nature. But he, this, this thirsting is not, and it's important that you hear this, this thirsting for the more of God's word is not just to have something to drink. This is about being able to call on the name of God because you are searching and thirsting for whatever it is that God has for you. And for me, and Lord, I just, I want to pray for those who are needing help, uh, those that are needing safety and security, those that need financial blessings, those that need a breakthrough that would cast down and root out sickness and disease. We bind the hand of the devil because we can step on the adder's head because you've given us the power, for we stand on a solid rock. And so when you believeth on the scripture, he said, out of your belly, comes the rivers of living water. The, river, the rivers of living water represent the holiness of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's a quickening, that even the quickening that it says, even when you pray, you need the unction, the presence, uh, the, the impartation of the Holy Spirit within your inner man to bring you to a place to empower you to be able to do God's work on a daily basis, to give you the power. You can have all the money in the world and never have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. That's another point that you receive the peace of God that passeth all understanding. So out of his belly, out of your belly flows rivers of living water. In other words, the quickening of the Holy Spirit is represented or symbolized here as water. And, and, and so I want you to, to, to just understand that as we go into this lesson, hallelujah, God bless you, Sister Naomi, as, as we go into this lesson and into the text of the teaching, I, I just want you to know that, that God is a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you ask or even think because we serve a God who says that I do all things and he does it in decency and order. And so as you see my eyes moving back and for because I'm working the screen and trying to teach at the same time, but and share the screen with you. But God has given you this anointing in your life for a purpose. And I want you to hear and to learn today what it actually means to be in the presence of God, to be in the presence of God where, where you understand this quickening of the Holy Spirit of God. And so I want to take you now to where it says the anointing of the uh, with oil before entering into the presence of God. Well, let me slow down. What that represents is how you come into the presence of God in your daily prayer life. And see, you cannot operate in this world with Christ Jesus, God, through God, who is Christ Jesus. You cannot operate and be in the presence of God without accepting Jesus Christ. That's that's the Christian belief. That's that's the, the chosen ones, the ones that call us the believers in the way with Christ. Uh, um, those who live for the glory of God, that everything that you do is about growing even stronger in this empowerment of the anointing that covers your life. It's the place of outside the where the lavier, uh, where you become and you get cleansed, that's your prayer life. It's called sometimes referred to as the sea of glass. This is where God will reveal to you even your sins. Hallelujah. When you get to the place where you're coming into the presence of God, he wants to reveal to you the things that he's pulling off of you. He reveals to you that not everything because his ways are so much higher. But Exodus 30 through uh, 23, 23 to 35, 
it breaks down all these different oils and the relationship that we're going to discuss in this book. And so let's go now. I just want to take you again. It says Hebrews and the in the word in the Hebrew, the word Greek word means the anointed one, Jesus as the anointed one. I, I know this is a scripture that I love too. And the spirit of Isaiah 61, uh, Isaiah 61 and one, the spirit of Adonai is upon me which is translated Adonai, has been uh, translated to the anoint, has anointed me. God, the Lord, Elohim, the prince has been anointed. The tabernacle was to be sacred. You are to live a life that God wants to bring us to this place of holiness. And so your life journey is a continuation of holiness, of getting to this place where you your, your old man pass away and you become a new creature. Holy in Hebrews means kadash, to be made holy unto the Lord, to be under the Lord, to be under his covering, to be sanctified and set apart by the word of God, to receive the gift of salvation, kadash, to be set apart. Uh, and so the Abba Father, our Father, his, has blessed you. Anything called out, hallelujah, anything called out by God was to be purified. So you've been called, you've been chosen, even for the foundation of time, you were made in his image. And so he wants you to live this life. He wants to purge you. He wants to sanctify you, to, to wash you. And so the water represents a washing, the cleansing. The oil represents a purification. And, and in order to get there, there had to be some crushing. Ah, there had to be some transformation. And so Jesus had to die on the cross so that the marvelous light that shined through him, because he is the light of the world, you know, he is the sun. Uh, he is both the sun, the light the moon, the stars, everything that you see, even the chair that you sit in, it was made from some wood that came out of nature, that God allowed man to have the ingenuity and the creativity enough to go into technology to even make a chair, hallelujah, take a cut down a tree, had to have a saw, had to have a mind, had to see what it was that God had for you to do. You may not be the carpenter, you may not be the lumberman, but God has given you a gift, hallelujah, and so under this this consecration of the anointing that I'm speaking of is, is no longer just for the high priest. It's for all of us. So when we come to the altar of incense, we come to the special place that's called the, the altar of the golden altar of prayer, where the special incense were burning. There, there were these incense because God told Moses to bring some special kinds of herbs before the altar. And so th these herbs, spices used for anointing, uh, let me highlight this real quick for you. Uh, the, the highlighting here, just, just want to emphasize this for you. Uh, the highlighting here, spice is used for anointing a sweet smell, symbolic of Isaiah's vision recognized in Isaiah 2. And so in Isaiah 2, the Lord said, said to Isaiah, the son of Amzah, uh, Am Amoth, concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord shall be established. In other words, God establishes and sets order, even from the top of the mountain, even to the lowest valley, to the hills, throughout the, all the nations. Hallelujah. Listen to this. This is scripture. This is scripture, brothers and sisters. This ain't anti seals, teacher. This is the word of God that I'm bringing to you that says, I, I, God, the Lord God, and many people shall go and say, come, come thee, let us go up to the mountain. Come ye, let's come into the place of prayer. Come into a place of worship. Come to the house of Jacob. Come to the tabernacles, to the temple, you the tabernacle, but come to the house of worship. Come to your churches and forsake not the assembly of my people so that I can re renew you, refresh you, and quicken the Holy Spirit, for it represents the foreshadowing of the coming of Jesus Christ. So I, I just want to take us to these different readings, but I want to go down to page 134 uh, now, the conquering blood of the Lamb of the, with the Holy Spirit. Oil. The conquering blood of Jesus uh, releases this holy oil that all of us can receive, and it represents the fullness of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost that's in your life because he's just one. The frankincense was a perfume used to also anoint Jesus. So these herbs that I'm going to share with you right now, these herbs that I'm going to remember that he was anointed by the woman with many sins uh, who with the, the he 
had delivered her. He had delivered her. Some say it was uh, Martha, but she was delivered from the different sins that she had in her life. And the oil alabaster uh, uh, box anointed his feet with oil. And there's a different teaching on this because he was anointed twice. And so, but he was anointed with oil on his feet. And, and even when they washed his feet with tears, he said the tears came to, to, to wipe and to cleanse the feet of God with her hair. She cleansed and wiped his feet. But she poured the oil, the representation of the oil. And uh, Luke 7, 44, Luke 7, 44 through 50, you can write it down and look it all up. And he turned to the woman and said and, and to Simon, seest thou this woman I entered into thine house? Thou gavest me no water, but she has washed my feet with tears. Do you not know that God hears and will bless you for the sincerity of your suffering? Because it represents that you have now come to him because you're in a place that you no longer know that you can handle this without God. You cannot handle this without a prayer life. You cannot understand this journey called life. That's why the spirit of suicide, which is the trick of the devil, is the snare of the fowler. The fowler is the devil. And with the anointing, he quickens your mind to be able to do all things through Christ Jesus, to be able to stand up from tremendous assaults and attacks by the devil in this world by depression and evil and anger and jealousy and hatred. He delivered you out of that. Thou gavest to me no kiss, but this woman, this woman, this, this lowly woman that, that in the Bible refers to her as a damsel, uh, the sense of time came, have not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil did and she anoint, but this woman anointed my feet Mm, with the ointment. Wherefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loves much. But to whom little is given, the same loveth little. Hallelujah. And so you got to read these scriptures, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we get into now, what is this fragrance? What is this oil? What does it represent in Jesus? For well, the next 20 minutes, that's what I'm going to do, is, is share with you the making now of the holy anointing oil. I'm going to share with you now the making of the holy oil that was put on Jesus that now is running like the rivers of living water, is the presence of the Holy Spirit of God that's in you. It's in your inner man, and you never can tap into with your natural mind because your spirit physical body, your physical mind, your natural mind is, is enmity. It has enmity. It has to hate towards God's word. And so that's why you've had such a battle within yourself to live for the glory of God, to do the will of God, to, to turn away from sin because, because we're on this journey and you need God. He is your GPS. Hallelujah. He is your geo positioning system. He will position you for the word says, I have set before you. I have a established, and he has a plan. So who is this that forgiveth sin also? And he said unto the woman, that thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. I come to tell you right now that the anointing of the Holy Spirit on you has set you free. It has delivered you. You're no longer in bondage. You've been, you have escaped. He's turned the captivity of your mind. And so the special compounds or the herbs that were made for the holy anointing were costlier and not as readily available as the same as the uh, 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 golden altar incense. But this is anointing oil. This is the oil that they offer also put on the feet of, of, of Jesus and they brought to, to, to his grave site. Uh, the, the women came with oil to anoint him for his burial when Jesus died on Gethsemane, on, on, and, on Calcutta, the, on, the, on the hill where they crucified my Jesus. Uh -huh. And they put him in a tomb, but he wasn't there. He arose on the third day as he promised. And, but they went in mm -hmm, and they Mary says that, that he's not here. He's not here but he lives in you and I. My Redeemer, our Redeemer lives. This symbolizes 
the holy anointing oil that I've been talking about. There's additional caveats or blessings in the reverence of the holy oil. The word is nigh you. He is near you. That's the blessing of God. That's the spirit of God. As a believer, you can call on the name of Jesus wherever you are because you are the meeting place of God. He's in you. He dwells in you. He's no longer just a symbol on the vest of the high priest. He's no longer just the high priest of the Old Testament. He dwells in you. This was the whole plan that Jesus put in our hearts. He said, I stand at your door and knock, asking you to open your hearts. The word is nigh you, so come on in. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. The following scriptures, as I said before, uh, will break down for us what does it mean to have these, 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 these 12 and a half pounds of myrrh, three and one quarter pounds of cinnamon, six and one fourth pounds of sweet cane and 12 and a half pounds of cassia and a gallon of olive oil. Ah, Psalms 45 and 6 says, thy throne, O God, says thy throne, O God, hallelujah, is forever and forever. The scepter of the kingdom is at right. Uh -huh. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, he has anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. God is telling you that when you have this anointing, this presence of God in your life, the quickening of the Holy Spirit that, that lives in you, that you can call on, that you can live through, that you can function daily through, that he'll teach you. That's why he calls us sheep. That's why he calls and says, we hear his voice. You will hear his voice, give you clarity, wisdom and knowledge and understanding, give you the empowerment to do his will, to carry out the plan for why he created you. There are three special spices that I want to carry forth to you that I'm going to share right now, the myrrh, the myrrh spice. It was a bitter tasting. Notice bitter, bitter. Remember they gave Jesus some myrrh as mixed with water and they gave him a drink on a sponge and it was bitter. Uh, this is what it was. It was, it was a mixture. It was, a, it, was, it, was, it was tasting gummy. This is the same ugly, nasty stuff that flowed from shrub trees that grew in Yemen, uh, which is just outside neighboring of Africa. The myrrh is a gummy substance, residue. It's a rhythm uh, which came from the incision. You had to cut, notice now, you had to, there had to be an incision. There had to be a bruising, there had to be a cutting away in order to get the, the gum resin, resin out of the sap, if you will, out of the tree. Ah, glory to God. So, so this, this, this shrub tree uh, had to be cut. Mm, it had a bitter taste, but it had a pleasant odor. It also was smooth and with fruit, somewhat larger than a, than a pea. And according to the passage, it also possessed medicinal qualities. I notice now, these same herbs is what was brought to uh, Jesus when he was a baby. When the wise men came to visit him, they, they brought him frankincense and myrrh. Ah, glory. When he died, they, they brought to the tomb uh, frankincense and, and, and myrrh and you know, galbanum. And, and I won't explain it, but according to the passage, there's some healings. There are bomb in Gilead uh, that, that God is a healer, that, that this angelic spice, uh, the divine spices, if you will, it was antiseptic and a stimulant according to how it was used for the anointing and the embalming even of the dead. Ah, remember, they came to anoint Jesus. They weren't going to embalm him. They were coming to anoint him. And at the altar of incense, there's also the spices used and galbanum like myrrh had a bitter taste. Mm. The bitterness reminds you of the suffering of Jesus, the suffering of our God, our Lord, and our Savior. The suffering, moreover, that you experience when you go through prayer, that, that you're willing to leave it all at the altar, at the feet of God. God, that, that I'm laying flat on my face saying, God, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the, eh, the gifts that baby Jesus represents, humanity and the suffering that Jesus would experience. Your prayer life, hallelujah, will bring you to a place that you're not ashamed to cry out, say, God, I need help. God, forgive me for my, my ugly thoughts. You got some. Come on now. You, you know you got something in there that needs to come out. Yay. Shalom. Ah, glory to 
God. So, so these are the teachings of God's word. You, you can see me and getting excited, this bitterness that's in man, that's our humanity. But God made you a conqueror even over this flesh. Mm even over the flesh of who you are in you because you have a spirit man and you have above that and that deep down inside of you, you have a spiritual being, which is the Holy Spirit, which, which is the mandate of your soul that's going to come back to him when this old body wears out. It's going to go somewhere. Where is your soul going if you don't know who Jesus is and you're not living? I would rather for you not to know Jesus than to live knowing who he is and still sinning, still out here trying to be a play. Let me get to the herbs. Let me, <laughs> glory to God. And so they're gifts for baby Jesus, the gifts that God has given you. And so the second of the spices, John 19, 39 says, the aloes were spices used that perfume with the intention of also anointing our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. Uh, uh, this is the second of the choices of cinnamon was six and a half or six and one four pounds of cinnamon. Cinnamon also comes from what's called the laurel family of, of, of evergreen trees, knows as a fragrant camper. You can go out in your yard, and if you got, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, it, it has a, it's like having peppermint. It has a, a, a smell that you can smell. The odor of cinnamon is sweet. Mm. And taste and see that the Lord is good. He, he has it's honey to the taste. It's, it's a cinnamon sweet smell. Cinnamon is, is is symbolic to the type of of oh my God. Let me point this out to you. Oh yes, thank you Lord. Uh huh. Uh, and every time I teach, I learn something new. The, the symbolic of the type of provisions made for your intercessions given to those who have effectual prayer life. Hmm. Twelve years ago, fourteen years ago, I wrote this book. And, and it's called the Tabernacle Dwellers in you. I had no idea that my prayer life would be what it is today, that I today was involved with the prayer, with the PPP prayer ministry out of Victory Apostolic Church and Pastor Singleton is the pastor uh, and also uh, uh, Evangelist Mother Curleen. Uh, Wes Hastings and, and 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 my sister evangelist Cherry uh, Harrison, they they were on and they invited us and so we had a guest speaker. Uh, his, his name is out of, a bishop out of uh, uh, Uganda and he was teaching us about the Word of God in a session with prayer. That that when you pray, you have a life in prayer that that you are already escaped. I have escaped. I have escaped. From the hand of the snarler. Uh, God turned the captivity. That's what this all represents because Jesus died for you and I. It serves against twofold purpose to remind you, to remind you, remind you of the sin nature of who you are and the love nature of who you can be. Woo, through Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy. To remind you where you come from and where it comes from who has blessed us, Jesus has blessed us, delivered us out of the bondage of sin. This represents a sweet spirit rooted in your heart. This speaks of the Christian faith, uh, uh -huh. it, but it speaks not just to Christian faith, but to the attitude uh, that you have. Do you have an attitude of love? Do you have an attitude of temperance and kindness and gentleness? Or are you always bitter and negative and, and unforgiving and jealous and doubtful and never have anything nice? The third, the third uh, ingredient in the anointing oil, the sweet calamus, sweet calamus. This word means, check this out. This word means to be redeemed. This word means to be set free, that you've been purchased, a propitiation, if you will. There's, there's a cost. That the redemption means that something fell out of order and it had to be uh, recaptured. It had to be taken back. It had to be purchased. And accounting is called balancing the books. And here we have this redeemer propitiation that Jesus dies purchase. He purchased you with his blood, meaning that he gave you this gift, but it came with a cost. What are you willing to give back to God? And he does not ask you for your blood. It may feel like it, but all he asks you to do is believe and to be willing to carry your cross. Now, it may make you feel like you're bleeding, make, make you feel like you can't bear no more, but when you got this anointing, I'm not talking about just some incense and some calamus and some frankincense and some myrrh. I, I'm, I'm talking about the holy word of God, the writ of God, the spirit of God that's dwelling 
in you right now. And, and so it lists these, these characteristics uh, uh, of that anointed person. It says the word means to redeem, purchase, to be possessed as, as bought. Own. Uh -huh. It is also listed as they read the grass, uh, a reed of grass along the banks. Understand that this reed of grass is the same type of reed that was used, that was made for the basket that Moses was made to put in. Uh huh. Uh, when they when he went up the river, yes. And 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 Pharaoh's uh, sister found him. Mm, that's something. And this also describes the spirit of a person who knows where they are in Christ Jesus. They know that they need a relationship. They've been redeemed by the blood. They have confessed with their mind. Yes, these characteristics come, they come, they're in you. And also these characteristics point to a person who's gained a new level of spiritual maturity. You understand you've been given godly wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. There are seven pillars of Christ that are mentioned in the book of Revelation that I taught on. And three of them I just mentioned, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I know this is a lot, brothers and sisters, but I'm trying to just expose you to it too. For some that may never have received this kind of teaching, for some that already know, it's just to embellish, to help, to, to assure us that this word is a powerful word. It is the breath of God. It is not of man. It is a spirit of God, that the spirit of living God, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, has given the, all the word of God to different men and women who wrote this Bible, and it becomes a living word. While grass reed represents weakness, as they gave Jesus calamity reads as he was being led uh, uh, to, to, to crucifixion. However, can you uh, once again realize the power of prayer? What happens as you sacrifice uh, your time with Jesus? He always purges you. So these, these, these herbs that all had to be purged, they had to be cut off. They had to be diced. Let me, let me get to this and close out. The fourth, the fourth of the five um, is cassia or cassia is, is, is one of the principal spices. It is like a type of cinnamon used for the anointing of the priest in the tabernacle. Uh, the dictionary in the Hebrew says the cassia was grounded into powder, grounded. What did they do to Jesus? They beat him so bad that he was unrecognized. You ever been through, through a, 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 a terrible fight or been in a basketball game, football game, and, and the pressure in the game, you've been elbowed, you've been knocked down, you've been tackled, knocked the air out of you. They took my Jesus life that he could be grounded up and did it with such joy because he knew that if I give my life to, to, these, to these, these human beings that I made, to these stiff-necked people, Moses calls us, that this, aram this ar ar aromic smell, this, this, this sweet anointing, this oil, the waters that are in you, that's upon you, that are through you, the anointing of the acacia equipped the priest as you are a servant, you are a servant, minister meaning to serve, uh, on how to operate in your gifts, has established a prayer life, and you have learned to abide and to walk in the glory of God and his presence. That's not in the earth where you, you run around bragging. It's a place of where, in John 4, 23, says, uh, says this way, uh, it's on page 138. Uh, uh, you, you learn a lesson and listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit because you are a worshiper who worship the Father, the Son, and, and truth. And so those that worship him in spirit and in truth, that's who he is because he's a spirit. And he requires us to worship him in a spirit and truth. And in that, the righteousness of God fills you up. The, the right way of living takes over in your natural mind and you become more subject to the spirit of the living spirit of God than you do to the natural mind. Hallelujah. And so the fifth and final ointment that's here uh, is, is the, the fifth and final is, is a gallon of olive oil. And, and it goes through a pressing. It goes through a threshing floor process. The olive oils are pulled off the vine. Mm -hmm. There's a picking and a pulling and a pressing that pulls off 
and is dragged. Uh, and there was a, 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 a illustration I saw once that in Israel they had a, a, an oil vat where the 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 mule uh, they had a treadmill and and the mule they had the oil the the olives laying uh, on the ground and 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 they had uh, this this device that was laid over it that would peel uh, the skin off and crush the olives so that the, the seed was the only thing that was left. And they took the oils, they were able to separate the oils from the skins and the dirt. And they used that, that oil mm -hmm, to, to use for the lantern. They, they used that to anoint people that were sick. The olive oil is the last ingredient for completing this mixture of the holy anointing or the holy ointment. And all the spices in the oil, uh, olive oil, uh, are used for consecrating, is used to separate. This is ordination. This is where you're called out. But the consecrating is something that you can do because God has called you, ordained you. He says you're the elect of God. You're the chosen of God. You can be his ambassador. You can be his people. You can be the mystery. You, you know the mysteries uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so in the Old Testament, the anointing oil was used to anoint the high priest. However, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, yes, the Holy Ghost right now is the Holy Ghost in you. It's the Holy Spirit quickening you. It's the Holy Spirit ascending from Christ Jesus. Now it comes through you because he said that, that I, will, I will come to you. I will never forsake you. What does that mean? It means that you have visitations with the Holy Spirit if you can just believe it. You can receive it. And now you have the comfort of the Holy Spirit that will always abode with you. Abode means to live with, to abide in, to, to have residue, to be having a residency. Thank you. Uh, Zechariah said that the Jesus is the oil, uh, of the oil out of the olive oil. Zechariah 4, you should study that. Jesus represents the two olive oils and the two olive branches, tree branches. He's also the two golden pipes. So this is God. And Jesus standing uh, uh, on this in this place where Zechariah and the angels talking to him, saying, "Do you know what this represents?" And he said, "No." And he said, "These are the gold pipes. The pipes represents the presence of the oil that fills you up. It's not a pipe. It's the Holy Spirit that's flowing through you. It represents the candles of the Lord and the menorah. The menorah, the candle, the seven bowls are filled with oil. That oil, that that Holy Ghost, that rivers of living water." Water, the anointing on your life, it will never run dry. It may flicker, but it will never go out because it's the presence of God in your life. Hallelujah. You ain't got no bowl on your head, but if you get anointed with the Holy Ghost or somebody speak in your life with that kind of gift and bring forth that anointing, ah, men and women of God, you don't have to live in darkness and corruption and evil. Let your light shine. Hallelujah. For there's a spiritual anointing, the divine impartation on closing. The divine impartation of the Holy Spirit is upon you. The believers to empower male and female, young or old, uh, through the gift of grace, which is Jesus dying on the cross, the gift of grace uh, that, that, that accomplished what the law could not in the Old Testament. But they knew who God was, and which is through Jesus Christ. It's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It's the comforter. It's, it is the quickening and the equipping of your gifts, of your the authority that God has given you, the revelation he's given you, the wisdom he's given you, the knowledge he's given you, the understanding he's given you. He gave you some gifts. He gave you some gifts. He's given you a power and the authority. He's embellished upon you. He's discharged you to go forth. He's assigned you to go forth, to carry forth your appointed duties. I don't know what your duties are. I don't know what your responsibilities are, but wherever they are, God is speaking to us right now. God is calling the anointed children of God to come forth. All ye that hunger and thirst of the Lord, come and drink of this water. Come and eat of this bread. What is this bread? He said, because I am the Alpha and the Omega. Revelations 22 and 13, as we close out, as I close out, and we're not going to finish this whole chapter because it's just too much. And so I am the Alpha. I am the Alpha and Omega, says God. 
the first and the last, beginning and the end. Revelations 22 and 13 and 17. To Revelations 22, if those are writing it down, blessed are those that wash, that wash their robe, that may have the right to the tree of life and may grow through the gates into the city. God, who is the gate? Jesus is the gatekeeper. Jesus is the gate. He's the way, the truth, and the light, and the life of God that's shining outside of you are the dogs. What are, what are around you are the evil, the sexual immortality, immorality that's in our world today, the, uh, the, the magic arts, uh, the witchcraft, the murderers, idolaters, everyone who practices and believes in love, but their falsehood, their, their, their sheep dressed in, 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 in their, 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 their wolves dressed in sheep clothing. They, they pretend to be a God, uh, but you let anybody do and, and do say glory to God. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you. Mm, I, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. I, Jesus, have sent and my angel to give you this testimony for the church. This is John talking that's writing this out of Revelation 22. I am the root and offspring of David. You are the children of Abraham. So you are an off root. You, you're an off branch. You, you, you're the horn. The horn represents the strength of God that's in you, the, the power of God, the oil that they poured from the horn. And then they blew the horn to, to give uh, evidence that the power of God was moving to call the people together to hear the glory of God speak to you. And the bright morning star, the spirit and the bride come. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming back to get you and let one who hears say, come. I say to you today, come unto the Lord and, and be free, not be ensnared and no, no longer uh, in the snare of the fowler, but you've been delivered, you've been set free because it said, let them that have a thirst come. Let those that hunger come. Let those who wish to take of the free gift of the water of life come. Come now, brothers and sisters, before Jesus Christ. Come the more and let him take you. Ah, these, these, all of these in summary represents the rare small nature and the appearance that are commonly and unattractive, but God takes it and purifies it. He takes you and purifies you and brings glory out of your life for him and him alone. He takes your weakness and your unattractiveness and your rejection and he molds you over and makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old man has passed away and all things have become new. Can you believe it? That now your prayers become a sweet smell in his presence. This is Elder Anton Seal. Hallelujah. Giving God all the praise, honor, and glory. We exalt his name because he's God and God alone. I thank you, Lord, for this, this opportunity. I thank those that are on uh, to be with us. I thank you that may be listening live on Facebook. I just come to say praise God, praise my Holy Father in the name of Jesus. I come to say thank you, God, for what you're doing, seen and unseen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Next week, we're going to be teaching uh, out of chapter six. We're going to break down for three weeks what it means for three weeks on two o'clock next Tuesday for three weeks. We're going to break down what it means to have on the whole armor of God. And, and believe me, I've learned so much over the years about prayer and how it quickens you to understand. So you see, when David tried to put on uh, King Saul, uh, his robe and his sword and his shield and all that, it wouldn't fit him. God prepares us for a perfect time that he set for us to grow, to mature. And all we're doing is sharing what we've learned. All I'm doing is sharing what I've learned from the Holy Ghost and other men and women of God who I've been blessed to have speaking to my life sharing the training and the teaching of God's word. If you're listening, this is Elder Anton Seals in the absence of my beautiful, lovely wife, sweet uh, Elder Jennifer Seals, uh, who, is, who has been nothing but a, a blessing uh, like any marriage we go through. But thank you, sweets. I got to say it. I can't thank her enough. Sister Naomi Jennings, praise God for your presence. Praise God for you, Brother Clarence Brown. And others that may not be on, I can't see you, but if you're on Facebook, God bless you, Sister Vanessa Bowley, who normally is on Facebook. But I thank God 
but how she has stood by me by faith and prayed through all that we've gone through and my sickness. What you're looking at is a man that, that three months ago had surgery to remove five vertebrates from his neck. Why does he talk about that so much? Because it's a miracle after 12 years that I'm teaching this class and I don't have no sickness. I don't feel no pain. I, do I get sore? Sure. Am I still healing? Sure. Uh, but, but God, but yet God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, Jesus, thank you. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. He's opening new doors. We'll be back on next week. I was trying to find my, here it is. We'll be on next week. And we're going to be teaching uh, chapter, chapter, uh, week nine, chapter uh, five. Uh, we're going to start with that. And, and we're going to, well, I'm going to teach some more uh, on the anointing oil, but we're going to go into putting on the whole armor of God, putting on the whole armor of God. We, we taught today, um, what we did today is we taught on uh, chapters 5, 131 to 46, uh, but we're going to start next week and talk about putting on uh, the whole armor of God and what this represents. We're going to take three weeks, three weeks. We're going to spend just time to teach that so that people can just stop saying, well, I put on the whole arm of God. You ain't got no relationship with God just because you go to church and you say that. That don't mean nothing to God. And I want to help you, help you know that this is how God will help you understand. The Holy Spirit will give you revelation and can quicken your mind to be a better soldier on the battlefield of the Lord, because we're all called to be soldiers on the battlefield of the Lord. I thank you. So we'll be on next uh, week, the 27th of, of September. Uh, we're going to do this for the next eight weeks. And then we, after this uh, series, we're going to start teaching on uh, the stewards of the tabernacle, which we're going to talk about you being a steward, steward of the mysteries of God. And we're going to talk about what that means in relationship to your giving and serving God, giving your tithes, your offering, your time, your talents, and your treasures as a steward who, who God has given authority and power as, as, the, as, as um, kingdom workers who are responsible for all that God created that he put under you as a king and a priest, a priest to pray, a king that leads, lowercase, lowercase p, lowercase k, but that God has equipped you for special assignment, and we want to quicken you to be able to go into warfare in your prayer life, in your walk daily, that you can call on the name of Jesus and wherever you are, and know that even when you don't feel it or see it, know that he's always there. He will never leave you. This Thursday, this Thursday uh, at seven o'clock, our podcast on Thursday, we will have Evangelist Curling West Hastings, uh, who's the coordinator of the PPP Prayer, Power, and Praise Ministry out of Victory Apostolic Church. She will be our special guest this coming Thursday at seven o'clock. At seven o'clock, hallelujah. And we will have a guest speaker on the PPP Prayer Line next week at for senior day at 10 o'clock, a brother that's coming out of Ghana, uh, no, Uganda, Uganda, Apostle um, Kasubi, Apostle Kasubi, so Fred Brian Kasubi out of Uganda, so we're looking forward to that, so we're doing some great things that God is getting the glory, we pray that all that we do, uh, stay tuned, we got some new things that's coming up on a Wednesday. I ain't going to tell you all about it, but it's coming Wednesday, uh, October 5th, Wednesday, October 5th at 2 o'clock. We're going to have another series uh, of some people that are coming to deliver the word, to pray for you and break through ministries and, and deliverance and prophetic words. Hallelujah. That's going to be on Wednesdays. Ah, you better be ready for this. God bless you. I'm so excited about what God is doing in my life and in your life. I don't know you, but I'm excited. If you want some of this joy, the joy of the Lord, which is my strength, read the Bible, have a prayer life. Tune in next week. Tune in on Thursday. We'll have awesome teaching by evangelist uh, Mother Curleen West Hastings. God bless you. Peace and blessings be with all of you. I thank God for this podcast. Love you with the love of Jesus. Ain't a thing you can do about it, but spread more love. Spread the joy of the Lord. You are a candle. Be quickened and know. Be lifted up for the King of glory. Your countenance is changed. You are a child of God. Bless you. 
Love you. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If this has been a blessing to you, please reach out to us. You can sow a seed in our ministry. You can find us on ajsministry.net. Um, you can also look us up on Facebook under Elder Anton Seals. You can look it up under the Tabernacle uh, um, uh, of Worship. Uh, so you can just type in Anton Seals and you'll see all the things that Elder Jennifer Seals and I are doing. God bless you. Peace and blessings until next time. Hope to see you on Tuesday ne uh, next week. And I hope some of you will join us on Thursdays. God bless you. Lord, give us the increase that people will have a thirsting for your word. Use us for your glory. Be encouraged, Sister Naomi, for God is still doing a new work in you. Praise God for you. Thank you. Did you want to share anything, Sister Jennings? Hallelujah. I'm doing fine. No, that was a very good lesson. I enjoyed it. And Sister Jennings has, has been through this entire book <laughs> with me. And so I thank God for her. I thank God for your recovery. I thank God for how he continues to give you godly wisdom to speak in, in others' lives, not just mine, but even others. And so I thank God for you being a sister, woman of God, and my sister in Christ. I thank you. I thank you for the wisdom. Uh, Minister Parham is not on it, others, but I thank God for all of you. Peace and blessings till we meet again. Willa, Sister Willa May, we miss you. Uh, and your sisters being on, Deacon Nevels, we miss you. And so we're back. And so we're asking people to join us on Tuesday. Re reach out to us. Those of you that can call us, please feel free. God bless you. Take care. Thank you, Sister Jennings. Bless you too, Brother Anton. Wonderful lesson. Really enjoyed it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Rest, rest in the Lord. Hallelujah.